Hey guys, I'm Brett, the Nerdy Engineer. One question I seem to get a lot is, you know, what option should I choose when getting a Tesla? Uh, you know, most people don't want to just max out the car because a Tesla already is, you know, the most expensive car they've ever purchased. Uh, you usually buy at least a factor of two or more. So, you know, people kind of want to be selective and get the most bang for their buck and not uh, pick options that they really don't need. The first thing you want to look at when buying a Tesla is the battery size. Right now, for the Model X, Tesla has a 75D and a 100D. I typically recommend that people buy the largest battery pack they can afford. When you're looking at the range, 100D is rated for 295 miles and a 75D is rated for 237 miles. However, that's talking about under ideal conditions, charging the battery to 100% and taking it all the way down to zero, which is not recommended. Charging to 100% on a regular basis degrades your battery faster, so you really only want to charge to 100% on road trips. And you don't really want to take it down to zero either because you know you have to make sure you're going to make it to your charger, and it, going all the way down to zero is supposed to be bad for the batteries too. You, know, you kind of want to stay away from the extreme ends. So under ideal conditions, you're really only going to have about 250 miles of range in a 100D and about 200 miles of range in a 75D. And I said under ideal conditions, because there's a lot of things that also impact your range. Your speed, if you're driving 80 miles an hour on the interstate, you're not gonna get the rated range. Also the weather, if the roads are wet from you know, rain or snow, uh, that's gonna really impact your range. And if you're driving into a headwind, you know, a 10 mile an hour headwind is basically like you're driving 10 miles an hour faster. So uh, all of those things are, can really impact your range. But that doesn't mean a 75D is not a a great car for a lot of people. 200 miles of range is plenty of range to drive around, commute to work, run errands, uh, you know, go on little trips. So a 75D is still a, a great option for a lot of people. The other thing you want to do is check out the supercharger network. Uh, not necessarily the superchargers in your city. You want to see, you know, from your city to the places that you tend to vacation, how does the supercharger network look uh, along those routes? And a great website for checking that stuff out is evtripplanner.com. You pick which Tesla you have, your battery size, and uh, where you're going to and from, and it'll map it out with the superchargers, tell you how long you have to stop and charge at each place, and you know let you know if, if you can actually get there or if there's too big of a gap between superchargers. I ended up getting the 90D, which was the largest battery at the time, uh, because I live in Colorado and going up to the mountains, skiing, hiking, and all that, uh, going uphill in elevation really depletes your battery a lot faster. Uh, going down, you do have regen, so you recover some of that and you're a lot more efficient going downhill. But on your way up to the mountains, you're going to use a lot more battery, and I didn't want to be concerned about that, especially in the winter, going skiing with you know, snow on the roads uh, and with being cold, I knew that was going to impact my range. After you pick your battery pack, the next thing you'll want to look at is what seat configuration you want. So Tesla has a five, a six, and a seven seater version. And they all kind of have their own pros and cons. Uh, the five seater, uh, I think it's a great option if you're only ever going to need to fit five people maximum in the car. Uh, and the reason for that is you have all that extra trunk space. It's like having the third row seats down all the time. Plus, on the five seater, the middle row actually folds down so then you have a ton of cargo room if you needed to haul uh, some stuff. The five seater is a lot more versatile because that middle row actually folds down. In the six and seven seaters, the middle row, they don't fold at all, so uh, it limits how much usable space you have if you need to haul something really large. As you guys know, I have the six seater, which I think is a great configuration. Because you don't have that middle seat that you would have in the seven seater, it provides a lot more leg room in the third row and so you can actually fit adults back there. Another nice benefit of the six seater is when you have people that are gonna be sitting in the back, they don't actually have to move the middle seats forward to crawl in. They can crawl over the middle seats and go through the back that way. That opening also provides you know, a lot of room for extra storage, you know, bags if you're going on a road trip or something, uh, luggage, that sort of thing. Tesla recently came out with a variation on the six seater that has a center console between the middle seats. At first I was a little skeptical because I was afraid that it was going to take away the leg room that you'd have in the third row, but actually it still provides plenty of leg room for the third row seats and it provides a much needed armrest for the middle row. 
it also includes storage and cup holders. So there's plenty of nice benefits of having that center console. The only downside that I really see with having the center console is you lose that access to the third row seats and you lose some of that storage space that you have between the seats. But I think it's worth it. It's a $500 upgrade. And I think if I was buying a Tesla right now, I'd get the six seater with that center console. And that leaves the last option, which is the seven seater. And I think the seven seater, I really can only recommend it if you absolutely have to transport seven people. Uh, otherwise I'd say go with a six or a five seater. And the reason for that is the third row becomes a lot less usable in the seven seater. Adults can't really fit back there very well because there's not that extra leg room that you get from having that missing middle seat. And on top of that, it's kind of claustrophobic because you just have these seat backs in front of your face. When you don't have that middle seat there, as in the six seater, it's a lot more open and you don't feel as enclosed in. But in the seven seater, you really kind of feel like you're closed in there and you're trapped behind those seats. Now the most important upgrade is definitely autopilot, which now there's two versions of autopilot. There is enhanced autopilot and full self-driving. I would definitely hands down recommend everybody buy enhanced autopilot. And the reason why I say not to get the full self-driving is because the software is not ready yet. It's probably going to be another year or two before Tesla has that software kind of refined enough to activate it. Plus the laws aren't in place yet right now. I believe in all the states, or at least most of the states, it's against the law to have a self-driving car. So Tesla has to wait until those laws get changed before they can turn the features on. So for those reasons, I'd say don't buy the full self-driving. The hardware's already in the car, and so you can upgrade it after the fact. Now, there's a penalty for doing that. I believe right now you pay $3,000 if you buy full self-driving uh, when you first purchase the car. If you do it after the fact, they charge you an extra $1,000, so it should be $4,000. But in my mind, you know, $3,000 for something I can't use for a couple years versus $4,000 when I can actually use it, I'd rather just wait and pay the extra money. The next option is the premium upgrade package. Uh, I personally have it in my car, but I felt like it was overpriced when I bought it. And back when I bought it, it had ventilated seats for the driver and passenger. Uh, Tesla has since get discontinued the ventilated seats, but the price is still the same. So I think it, it's even more overpriced than it was before. I definitely enjoy the features of the premium upgrade package, but I just don't think it's worth the price. The ventilated seats, which you know have since been discontinued, they didn't work very well. Uh, they don't provide much of a cooling effect at all, which I think is why Tesla discontinued them. Biohazard mode is one of the features that I really like. Uh, whenever you get behind a you know truck that a bunch of exhausts coming out of it, or you know you're driving past a cow pasture or something where it smells really bad, you know flip on biohazard mode and the smell like sucked out of the car right away. Plus, if you live in a city that gets a bunch of smog, then biohazard mode can actually, you know, extend your life. Like it has true health benefits. So uh, it's definitely an, a nice feature to have, but again, I don't think it's worth $4,500. And actually Tesla for a little while, it was on their website where you could buy the biohazard mode and get it added after the fact. Uh, it's not on their website anymore, but you can try calling your service center and see if it's still an available option. So it'd be worth calling and seeing if it is an upgrade that you can do. And I believe it was only 750 bucks or $1,000. It, it wasn't that expensive. The other features of the premium upgrade package, the cornering headlights, I think they're nice, but I've never had a car that had them before, so I wouldn't have missed them. Now the self-presenting door, when Tesla launched the Model X, I thought it was a pretty neat feature, but I thought it was mostly just a gimmick and I wasn't really sure how much I'd use it. The self-presenting door has really become one of my guilty pleasures. Whenever my hands are full, you know, picking up fast food to go and I walk out to the car and the door opens for me, I just get a smile on my face and, and love it. <laughs> I refer to it as my fast food chauffeur. <laughs> so it's a nice little feature. I mean, obviously I can live without it. Never had a car that had it before. The happiness that I get out of the self-presenting door, definitely not worth $4,500, but since I have it, you know, I do enjoy it. I don't think if I was doing it all over again, I would get the premium upgrade package. I think I'd probably save my money. If you live up north where you get quite a bit of snow, then you're probably gonna want the Sub-Zero package. And there's a couple reasons for that. Uh, the heated steering wheel is great. Uh, definitely a nice feature. Heated side mirrors and windshield wiper blades, those are also important. Uh, the windshield wiper blades, because on the Tesla, the windshield wipers are tucked under the hood, 
more than a normal car, and so you can't actually lift them up uh, when it's snowing out, and so your windshield wipers are more likely to freeze to the windshield. Plus, your passengers in the back, they probably really appreciate having heated seats when it's cold. Now, if you don't live somewhere that you get you know, regular snow in the winter or really cold temperatures, you can actually get by without the cold weather package by just using the app to preheat the car when you do have snow or super cold temperatures. I didn't do the upgraded audio package, and the reason for that's because I'm just not really an audiophile. Uh, you know, I think the stock system sounds perfectly fine to me. However, I have heard that people that are really into music and stuff, they really like the upgraded audio system. It sounds really great. So if that's important to you, then you know, by all means. One caveat is to use Sirius XM radio, you have to get the upgraded sound system. Uh, it doesn't come with a stock system. However, there's a workaround for that. Uh, if you have the app on your phone, you can stream it from the app uh, through Bluetooth, you know, listen to it in your car. So you still can access Sirius XM radio uh, as long as you do it through the app and use that workaround. One upgrade that I didn't get is the high amperage charger. The high amperage charger allows you to charge at a faster rate than you can on the, with the standard charger. Uh, with standard charger, you can charge at 25 to 30 miles of range per hour. The high amperage charger, I believe it's around 50 miles of range per hour. Uh, however, the charger difference has absolutely nothing to do with superchargers. A uh, supercharger is DC, uh, direct current, into your battery, uh, whereas the charger in your car, it's for AC. So when you're using like a, a regular Tesla charger, like a destination charger or something. Just because you have the higher speed charger doesn't mean you're necessarily going to charge it faster even on a Tesla charger. The charger has to be capable of the higher rate. In my opinion, the only time it really makes sense to get the high amperage charger is if you live somewhere uh, that your electric rates have a huge difference between the on-peak and the off-peak times and when the off-peak period is small. You know, if you only have a couple hours in the middle of the night uh, to get the lowest rate, then you might want to get the upgraded charger so that you can be sure that you'll get your full charging done in that time when your rates are the lowest. So if you fall into that scenario, then definitely by all means get the upgraded charger. But, you know, in Colorado right now, we have the same rate 24 hours a day. So <laughs> it doesn't really matter when you charge or how long it takes you to charge. So there's not much incentive to get the higher uh, capacity charger here. Now the tow package is another option that you may or may not need. Uh, a lot of people might think, oh, you know, I never plan on towing anything, why would I get the tow package? Well, if you want to haul bikes or skis or other things, uh, don't forget that there's no roof racks on the Model X, so having the tow package gives you the hitch that you can use a hitch-mounted bike rack or ski rack or something. So there's definitely still uses for the, the tow package, even if you don't plan on towing anything. Another important consideration is wheel size. And I know the 22s look great, especially in black, but there's a couple of downsides. Uh, first one, if you live somewhere they have potholes, if you hit a pothole with the 22s, you're not gonna fare as well as you do with the 20s. But more importantly, the 22s are gonna cost you 10 to 15% of your range. Remember when I mentioned earlier that the 75D was good for about 200 miles of, of range where you leave a little bit of buffer at the bottom and only charge 90%? Well, if you're rocking the 22s, then you can take 15% off of that, which 30 miles, quite a bit. So you're down to 170 miles of range. And that's under ideal conditions. So if you're driving you know, 80 miles an hour on the interstate, if the roads are wet, strong headwind, something like that, uh, you know, that's gonna hurt your range even more. So just keep that in mind. Uh, as much as the, the 22s look good, I would definitely recommend sticking with the 20s. You'll save yourself a couple thousand dollars and you're gonna have much better range. So if you already have a Model X, what options did you choose? And if you could do it all over again, would you change anything? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. If I could do it all over again, uh, I don't know if I'd get the premium upgrade package again, uh, especially since it doesn't have the ventilated seats. Even though they don't provide much cooling, uh, I think they do look sharp. Uh, that is one thing that I don't understand why Tesla hasn't changed. The black stripes on the sides of the ventilated seats look so good. If you're considering buying a Tesla and you found my videos helpful, then feel free to use my referral link. You'll not only save $1,000, but you'll also get free unlimited supercharging for as long as you own the car. If you're using an owner advisor, you can give them my referral code and they'll be able to hook you up with the same deal. Well, that's it for this video. 
Hopefully you guys found this information useful and now you have a better idea of which options you want to spend your money on and which ones you're going to take a pass on. Uh, don't forget to like this video and also uh, subscribe if you haven't yet. You can click over here and check out some of my other videos. I got a lot of Tesla ones. Uh, you can click up here uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks guys.